This morning, I want to talk to us on what I've called Beyond an Open Door. For most of us here, we can imagine the things that if they are injected to our lives now, our lives will just be perfect. I mean, our life and all our desires will just be solved. They, they vary. For some of us, if we can go get a job that is paying in six digits, then life will be okay, isn't it? But see, life is sometimes very funny to define. What you don't have is what you think. There is a feedback. What you don't have is what you think. If you have, life will be perfect. In Proverbs chapter 27, verse 7. Proverbs 27, verse 7. Please go back to the New King James Version for me. A satisfied soul loads the honeycomb. A satisfied soul can see the best meal. And what does he see? I'm not interested. But to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Why? He's been deprived for too long. Many a times, our, what we think we describe fulfillment for us is always about what we have been deprived of. To an hungry soul, life is very simple. To an hungry soul, give him food. Don't even garnish it. It is when you are getting food that you say, well, it's yesterday's soup. I don't eat the soup of three days. You are not hungry. So anybody that is fighting his wife on such thing, I have a good message for you. You are so blessed. That's why you can say, well, I, I, I like it fresh. I like it fried, not boiled. You are not hungry. But to a hungry soul, how many of you have gone to those type of, when we were boarding school those days? You will drink the gari with joy. It will have special effect. There will be taste of soap inside of it, but you know what I'm talking about. You just be enjoying yourself because you are really hungry. I mean, it, it just simplifies life for them. And, and I know that most of us here, there are things that we have longed for that we don't have, that if it comes in any shade, it's a miracle. Are you following me? If I give you a two-door car now, and all you've had is you are just walking, and I say, I give you a car, but it's two doors, what will you do? Will you say, well, I really don't like two-door cars. I, I like a car as big as Flex that has a third row. What can I answer with third row? Can I move from point A to B and just enjoy myself to an ugly soul? Every bit that thing is sweet. Uh, why? Because Lamentations chapter 4 verse 9, Lamentations chapter 4 verse 9 told me that it is better to die by the sword than to die of hunger. You will not have hunger. Yeah. When anytime you go home and you say, I'm hungry, you are not hungry. You are famished. When you meet hunger, People who are hungry and people in drought areas. 
You are not hungry. You are just, you just need to take something. Some of you will say, I'm hungry. After you have taken four different portions in the day, you say you are hungry. You are not hungry. You just want to taste. But when you see people who are really hungry, he said, those slain by the sword are better than those who die of hunger. For these pine away. Hunger takes life from you gradually. They are stricken for the lack of fruits of the field. For such a man, every bitter thing is sweet. Ask a blind man what described life for him. In John chapter 9, verse 24 and 25, a man was born blind. Jesus opened his eyes. Then some people started a debate around the man, John 9, 24 and 25. They said, okay, praise God, praise God. Give glory to God. We know that the man who healed you is a sinner. The guy said, whether it's a sinner, I don't know. But what I know is that I was blind and now I see. Isn't it? That solves everything for a blind man. I wish life is that simple. That what you lack now, immediately you get it. Life is simple. To the hungry man, food. To the blind man, sight. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 14. Isaiah 51 verse 14. The captive exile is things that he may be loosed. That they should not die in the pit. That his bread should not fail. He has things. He's looking for it. Why? Because he knows those things are essential for him. That he should not die in the pit and that his bread will not fail. In Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3. The Bible began to speak about the Messiah said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. So what the poor, when you are so poor, what you want to hear is what? Good tidings. He said, he has, he has anointed me to heal the broken hearted. When you are broken hearted, what you want to hear is healing. He has anointed me to proclaim liberty to captives. Opening of doors to people who are bound, comfort to people who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to bring beauty for ashes and oil of joy for mourning, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It means a man that is heavy. All that defines life for him is for praise to come. You are just looking for the opposite of your present experience. And you think that if you have the opposite of your present experience now, life will be good until you have it then you discover that there are still questions are you following me i want you to look at the prayer of jacob when he was running for esau from esau in genesis 28 verse 11 to 22 but let's go to verse 20 to 22 let's look at the prayer of jacob and i will discover that the prayer of jacob this morning is the desire of most of us that are here after the lord had appeared to jacob in that on that ladder in that vision jacob made a vow to god he said if god will be with me i just want to be assured that i'm not on this journey alone if God will be with me and keep me in this way, how many of you want God to keep you? How many of you know that you can't go through this life alone? Somebody must be keeping you. You are fighting many a times what you don't even see. So you can't even keep yourself from those things. You can't see the microbes around you. You cannot even see the works of the devil many a times. If God opens our eyes to see what the devil has planned for most of us, we will be shocked how much he has kept us. If God will keep me, because I can't keep myself when I'm fighting what I don't even see. If God will keep me in this way that I'm going, and give me bread to eat, and what? Clothing to put on. That I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord. Somebody say, then the Lord shall be my God. If God can just, for most of us, if He can keep you, give you bread, do you know what is called bread? You will not lack. Give you raiment, you are covered. 
Because the first shock man had after the fall was a shock of nakedness. Give me covering and make me return back to my father's house in peace. God will be God. Are there people who don't lack bread? Who don't lack raiment? Who are living in peace? But yet God is not God. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Why was Jacob saying that? Jacob slept using a pillow, a stone as a pillow. At that moment, all he could think for his life. You know what I'm talking about? There's a point in your life where you say, if I can just raise a three-bedroom flat that I will not need to pay rent. Then one year, one year, after one year, then you say, if I can just sell the house and go to UK. If God can just good, give me this, then, then it is solved. Then you get there. Then one day you say, God, if you can just bring me back to Nigeria, because I, being a stranger here is nonsense, but you bring me back in with capacity. I'm going to ask you today, what door will God open for you that when he opens it, we will solve the whole debate that God is God. Which one? It's not only this guy. You remember the lepers in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 3 and to 9. Who are the lepers? The lepers were outside the city. They said, if we sit here, we will die. If we go to the camp of the Syrians, they can kill us or they can keep us. If they keep us, they will feed us. All their greatest desire was what? To be fed. There was famine. The famine was so severe that people were killing their children to eat. So for the leper, life was just to be fed. Are you following me? Yes, sir. They don't even mind to be slaves as long as they are fed. When something becomes your great need you don't you won't mind many other things that can fall or can be you know moved around just to have that desire are you following me yes, they got to the camp of the syrians and it was empty and the bible told us what they first did they first ate because that was what took them there they ate then they suddenly discover food is not the only problem where is, who is following this story? I mean, Second Kings chapter seven, from verse three to nine. Get me to the place where they are in the camp of the Syrians. And they arose the fled at night. Okay, and when the lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate because that's the fundamental thing. And drank. Then they carried silver and gold and clothing. They went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried from there also. Were they planning to loot? What was their desire? To just eat. Some of you think you are so simple. Until God starts answering your prayer, then you know your desires are big. I mean, you said many years ago, if you can just get a 250,000 job <laughs> until you do start paying 200 naira for fuel, then 250,000 naira begins. God. In fact, you start fighting God. He's not faithful anymore. They move them, they hit them. Then after that, they discover that there is still another need. They said to one another, we are not doing right. This is a day of good news. If we remain silent, and wait till morning, some punishment will come upon us. Suddenly they discover that they were not positioned in that place just to eat and to drink and to amass. In fact, they were actually people to bring the good news of deliverance. Are you following me? Are you following me? I see, when we talk about apprehend purpose, we want to stretch out beyond every false comfort zone we have given to ourselves if you mark your own script you will always pass because you always understand your handwriting and what you are trying to communicate 
But when you understand that your purpose is not defined by you, but by another, then you will discover that even when times when you have thought you have achieved what you want to achieve, there are still things ahead prepared for you. So these lepers, in their own mind, they've eaten, they've carried away, but they discover this is a day of good news. And that's why God must do something for us beyond the greatest craving that is in our soul. Your greatest craving is not the fullness of God's plan. You didn't hear what I just said there. If, if that's all I can communicate. Because you thought, if God can do this and do this and do this for me, God will be God. God will do that and do that and do that for you. And God will say, I still have other things to do. Well, you are not following me. That you have to wake up to and follow. And you will discover that he put those things in your hand, not even for your own craving, but for his own plans. Glory to God. There is a Joseph in, jo in Genesis 40, verse 9 to 15. What is the greatest burden of Joseph? He was in the prison. He just wanted to be free. So when he interpreted the dream for the butler, what did he say? He said, remember me when you're out of this place. He said, and he began to explain to him, he said, show kindness, make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. I mean, when they get you out, Joseph, where are you going? I don't know. When we get, when we get out, we will begin to think about where we are going. But the most important thing now huh, is to get me out. And why do I need to get out? He said, because I was so there. I was lied to to be here. I've done nothing that, should, that they should put me in dungeon. I'm in this dungeon. It's unfair. So the greatest burden is, let me just step out. But the Bible says in verse 23, the butler forgot him. Because that's not all God wants to do. God is not only burdened to open the doors of the prison for Joseph. If Joseph had been released from the prison at that time, he will never become what God wants him to be. You see, it's a, it's a, there's a way when you're under intense pressure, you want something to happen that way. But because the person who is watching over you has a greater plan than your thoughts, that's why it determines the timing of things. Are you following me? And the orchestration of death. Because if Joseph, if after two full years of Joseph being forgotten, Pharaoh dreamt a dream, and it's better to interpret a dream for Pharaoh than to interpret for a butler. Because the butler has to talk to Pharaoh, but Pharaoh has to talk to no person. Pharaoh talks to himself. He said, I am Pharaoh. And only on the throne will I be greater than you. Are you following me? But he said, God, you have been unfair to me. I interpreted, I just want to be out of this place. To where? Have you seen people who just travel and they say, to where? What are you call Libya? There are people like, say, anywhere, I had a guy, he said, anywhere, anywhere outside of Nigeria, anywhere. He tried France. They didn't give him. He tried. So one day he tried Ukraine. Then they gave him. Then he came and was doing bye bye to me. I said, Ah, man of God. He said, At least Bari will not be my. When you are beyond that pressure, if, you, if it is Ghana, then one year after Putin began to shoot. In Ukraine, he carried himself. He first ran to Poland from Poland. Shall somewhere shall he in Germany now? The Lord is using him. He's hearing me because he's always following my this meet. You know, sometimes when you are under some very deep pain, you are barren. What do you want? A child. I mean, just a child. One day. <laughs> some people will say, "I'm barren." Even if the child is diseased. King Kocha Kobi Makomakwe Milagun. Oh, we need to be a motorcycle. Ah, your miracles will be perfect. Yeah. I say, any job, any job. Your life has gone beyond any job. God's purpose is over your life. God will orchestrate your steps. Are you following me? 
Is it, just, just open the prison. Just, just, just let me go. God said, where are you going? I want to tell you that there are desires higher than what you think about life. Let me give you two examples. I, I'm trying to enter these thoughts. One day, Elijah asked Elisha a question in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9 to 14. Ask what I will do for you before I am taken away. Michael, look at where you are now. This is a prophetic moment. Look at all you need now. I'm asking you, do you believe I'm a prophet of God? If you don't believe now, it's your headache. <laughs> Ask. You know, there are days I just come to service and I don't do the normal. Because all Elijah has been speaking to Elijah at that point is, God has sent me to, God has sent me to Jericho. God has sent me to Gilgal. He was just giving him traveling itinerary plan. But suddenly he changed the, the description. He said, ask me what I, shall, what I will give you according to your present need now. Before I be taken, not me, I'm not taken yet. <laughs> what will you ask? I know because I've given you the Bible story now, you will say you asked for mantu. <laughs> but I know, I know the people I'm talking to here, mantu will not easily flow through your mind. Mantu. You have a house. Thank you, sir. When there is a mansion, I will ask for a mantu. If I can give you five plots of land, one in color in color question, in Kartinge, aerodrome, I say receive it. <laughs> you know what he said? Say we receive it and collect purpose too. <laughs> but that I, I we refuse it. Yeah. <laughs> but the guy did not answer like most of us answered. He said, Give me a double portion. And if you think that is natural, you need to go study Gehaz. It, that you are around the prophet does not mean you always have a spiritual mind. Because Gehazi does not have a spiritual mind. What Gehazi saw when Naaman came was gold. People, just, people are just honoring this man of God. So if I say, ask, say, Pastor, but I have been looking at it. There's one, there's this uh, Faragamu, you know. It a special occasion. Eh? <laughs> if I can just, because that can take you to your girlfriend's house and create some impact. But the man to my girlfriend might not see it. It's real, but it's not visible. You know what I'm talking about. So they said, ask, and he said, give me a double portion of your spirit. Hallelujah. If you can comprehend Elisha, can you comprehend Solomon? In 1 Kings 3, verse 4 to 15, the Lord appeared to Solomon. Ask anything that you want. Anything. And Solomon was like, you can't, you can only, you will start asking from the point of your need. Have you noticed? Everybody starts is asking from whatsoever he still lacks. And Solomon said, God, give me wisdom. That I may lead your people. And God said, you did not ask for money. You did not ask for gold. You did not ask for the life of your enemy. Even if some of you now, if you don't ask for money, at least spiritually you can still ask, for, Lord, anybody that is going to stop my destiny, my destiny, you can build, develop a whole ministry of fighting your enemy. I don't get what I'm saying. Some of you are already bored now because I've not killed your enemy this month. I've not said, ah, I want Wuni. Ah, 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 ah. No shoe better. Ah, when you leave, bye bye. These are desire because some of you, the, the major preoccupation of your mind is an enemy. 
So if I ask you, ask. Please, what will you ask? And for some of you, the major preoccupation of mine is money. I said, Lord, I want to serve you. Give me capacity. A bank consume me, Lord, what can you see? God said, You have not asked for long life. How many of you know that this world is so bitter, painful? But who wants to die? Nobody wants to die. You have not asked for long life for yourself. You have not asked riches for yourself. You have not asked for the life of your enemies. But you have asked for yourself and understand for yourself understanding to discern justice. And God told Solomon, "You have it. You have it in such dimension that nobody before you, after you, will have it." And God said, "And the things you have not even asked." But I want to tell you that the truth is that there are very few. Why was God so shocked? Because this is not a very common experience from people. When God goes to people and says, ask what you want, they tell him the one that is paining them. If they are poor, they ask for money. If they are barren, they ask for a child. If they are sick, they ask for healing. You see, most of us are, you see, our desires, we can easily be interpreted. We just look like we are that complicated. If I was blind, now I see. I, mean, don't, I know you try to look like you are sophisticated, but the truth of the matter is that most of us are that simple. Lord, I have a female child. If you can give me a male child. It's as simple as that. And Lord, my elder sister's children are going to uh, British America. If you can take me. You will rejoice in it for three months, then you start your body again. Yeah, God. So it's not common for people not to talk to God from their point of need. But if you don't get that thought, it's not common. And go check yourself. It's not even common yourself. Many a times when your needs are intense, your devotion is stronger. Are you following me? You will talk to God. You will make vow. You will speak to him. Glory to God. Glory to God. So when God saw a man... That was not talking from his point of need. God said, this is not common. Why? Because there are certain things that are essential. And when you are deprived of them, it's a crisis. When we were blessing Jacob, the father Isaac said, I've sustained, I've sustained him with bread and with wine. I've sustained him. That's in Genesis 27 verse 27. I've sustained him. There are things that sustains us. They are so essential. They are so basic to life. Things like, as sophisticated as we are, food. It's essential. When, when there is crisis in the land, they call some people, they are on essential duty. They can say there is coffee. Everybody sit at home. Teachers will sit. You are not essential. Bankers, if ATM is working, you are not essential. But doctors, they are essential. You can't run away from whatsoever is essential. Food is essential. Tell your neighbor, say food is essential. <laughs> it's essential. You will not lack. I've sustained him with bread. I've sustained him with wine. Verse 37. Genesis 27 verse 37. Look at what they said. I've, he said, indeed, I've made him your master. I've given him, I've given to him, I've given, I've given to him as servants with grain and wine. I have sustained him. Sustained him. So important. That is why when bread is taken away, one of the things that can break people most in torture is food deprivation. They call you commander-in-chief. I was listening to our Mustafa 
that former, you don't know him, he was the Abacha CSO. He was a terror in this country. He said when they were torturing him, he said they would sometimes bring food to his cell like this in front of him. Somebody that have not seen food for five days, they bring it. They do like this and take it away. Or more, your master's degree will disappear. See, we think we are that sophisticated, but there are basic things that sustain us. Water. Say water. water. <laughs> so that's why that's why when one king wanted to torment a prophet, I think it was first Kings 22, 27. When Micaiah prophesied to Ahab that he was not going to return to battle, he said, put him in prison. Feed him with the bread of affliction and the water of affliction. You know the bread of affliction? The type of bread they give you, you wish they didn't give you. You know what I'm talking about? You have been hungry for five days, then they give you a crumb. They say, take it. You will, all the digestive juices in you will come alive without sufficiency. So they will begin to attack you. It's called the bread of affliction. You will wish you don't even have it. It's basic. The bread of affliction, the water of affliction. So these things are so powerful to people. But that doesn't make them all, all that describe life. How do I mean? Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. He fasted, the Bible says he was hungry. Another translation says he was an hungry. He became hunger personified. How many of you can fast for five days without eating? Edema lo, lati, ogunpa. Church will let you have mommy. See, 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 Egba man e ni mumi. E de ma lo biche. That's where you know you, this. All this power you think you have is bread and water, sustaining. They are giving you the right measures. You know your body is supplying. Suddenly, the and he had all power to bring that bread, which is his greatest need. So the devil said, turn this your stones to bread. And he said, ah, maybe it's not impossible. How many of you know he multiplied five loaves and two fishes? Talk to me. He walked on water. He brought money out of the mouth of a fish. It was not impossible for him to turn stones to bread. But he said, man shall not live by bread alone. I've shown you the importance of bread, but I'm telling you, it's the exclusive power of life is not in his hand. Man shall not live by bread alone. He sustains man. But don't think it's everything about man's life. That's why many times when you expect God to answer you in a particular way, and you think that that is the full description of what will make life meaningful for you, God says no. Because soon after you have eaten bread, you will discover that man does not eat, live by bread alone. I don't know whether you are getting this thought. So he said, he said, but man will live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. In John chapter 4, Jesus again was at a well. The Bible said when he was going at that well, he was tired and he sat at that well. He was tired. The disciples went to buy food because bread and water is life, basically. And Jesus sat at the well, and at that point, he looked at a Samaritan woman and said, give me water. And the woman must have said, this man is extremely thirsty, because if you're extremely thirsty, you won't know whether the person that wants to give you water is full or near house. <laughs> it is when you are not thirsty, is it? Is it ever water? <laughs> or for tea, bear? <laughs> that me, I only take bottled water. You are not thirsty, you just need water. But when you are thirsty, <laughs> you will go down to a stream. You will begin to, it will be suddenly clean. I, I don't know whether you have been there before. You, ah, who me know there, bro? Some of you even be saying, this is spring. This is weird. 
this we have fresh water. That's what tests those two people. The woman thought Jesus was so tested that he will break the protocol of speaking to a Samaritan. He said, how can you, a Jew, be asking for water from him, Samaritan? Jesus said, you think everything about life is water? If you know the world who is speaking to you, you will be the one to have asked him to give you the living water. The woman said, ah. Jesus said, if you drink this, your water, you will thirst. The one I want to give you, you will not thirst. The woman changed. The needy became the one needed now. The woman said, give me this water forevermore so that I will not need to come back here. Hey, in the thirst of Jesus, Jesus knew there were things still beyond this thirst. I wish you know today that this thing that is impressing pressure upon you is not everything about God's plan. Are you following me? Jesus was so thirsty, but Jesus knew that that water was just water. There was still something called the water of life. Job is job, but there is still something called fulfillment. It's not the same thing. Are you following me? Supply is supply, but there is still something called God's miracles and not the same thing. Are you following me, church? So the, the woman, Jesus began to speak to the woman. I, something shocked me in the entire book of John chapter 4. Jesus never drank water. The Bible started that story by saying Jesus was tired and sat on a well and needed water. But when Jesus got into the midst of something more than water, there was another type of water that started flowing. The Bible said when the disciples of Jesus came, and they saw that he was talking to a woman they were moved and when the woman went to the city they began to push Jesus to eat because the reason why they left Jesus on the well was to go get food then they brought the food to Jesus and Jesus will not eat it Jesus said I'm feeling the, the pangs of hunger but I have another bread that you don't know of I wish you know that not everybody in this world is controlled by the basic principles of biology and anatomy and uh, uh, when, what your stomach is calling for, what your brain is calling for. There are people that are living for something more than what five senses can minister. It's an essence. When you are talking about purpose, purpose is not discovered within the realms of your five senses. It's not according to... The need of water, the need of food, the need of feelings. Are you following me? That's why when you are trying to trap purpose in your feelings, God will, God will make you to get out of it. You can be feeling bad. You can be feeling pain and God is still taking you on a journey. Are you following me? Purpose is bigger than biology contraption. Purpose existed when you were in your mother, before you were formed in your mother's womb. I knew you, God told Jeremiah, forming in your mother's womb is the development of your anatomy. Purpose existed before anatomy. You didn't get what I'm saying. Are you following me? So that's why it's not limited to the cravings of the flesh that makes us think that if we have these things, life is satisfied. I don't know whether you are getting my point this morning. Jesus did not drink water. Jesus did not eat bread. Because Jesus had living water and Jesus had another bread. Some people are not making money as you are making, but they are living better. Hear what I just said. That's what is called purpose. They are satisfied. They are not worked up. Because there is another bread. Some people are not driving your cars. But don't think they are looking up to you. They say, Lord, if I get, they are not, they don't, that's why you can't buy them at voting point. Or on me, do 15,000. Have you woke, have you stayed up all night? trying to decipher what God is telling you before. Some of those things are serious matters that is the people who receive it that knows it. And when they know it, that's why when people are discussing certain things, it does not just settle into them because they have another bread and they have another water that you don't know of. I'm praying for somebody here that God will pull you out of just the basic anatomical description of human life. 
something more than what the five senses can describe will be a major push for your life. They say, this is the money, sleep with me. It is not, you are not even feeling tempted. You have the need. The money solves it. Are you following me? But you, the need cannot be that powerful to the point that said, you don't know who you are talking to. He said, I am the temple of God. I carry something that is, that is, I'm not, I'm bought with a price. And that price is what? The blood of the lamb. It's, it's outside of this realm. You say, please, pastor, where is this open door you are talking about? He said, the open door is simple. I said, you have need, God will open it now. You have a uh, need of car, God will give you car. And so what? That's your Joseph. Just get me out of here. Just get me out of here. Just get me out of here. Just take me to Dubai. Just get me out of here. Then after two years, you are sending us video there. Things are expensive here. After two years, you are sending us video. Ah! See, we told that be Lumio. Don't mind me. Don't be an Esau. In Genesis 25, verse 29 to 34, you remember Esau. One day Esau came out from the field. He was weary. And for a weary man, for a man who defines life with hunger, what's the solution? Food. And if I have food, life has made me. So if a man is weary and is coming from the field, what does he need? And get, give me that verse back, verse 29 again. Jacob cooked a stew. Somebody say Jacob cooked stew. Somebody had the solution to somebody's problem. And Esau came out weary. Any maku? You know what I'm talking about. And suddenly, somebody said, I'm weary. That one I said, eh, no problem. No problem. The person cooking was not hungry. <laughs> The best you hungry, do you have food? You know, life is fun. Are you following that story? Then he said, Give me, feed me with the rest you, for I'm weary. Therefore, they call his name Edom. It's red. Edom is red. The way he was talking, you think that after that meal, he will never be hungry in his life again. Then Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. Look at his answer. Look. Look, I'm about to die. <laughs> I, I'm about to die. What is birthright? I'm, I, I mean, his life was simple. When you are hungry, you eat. He, he, he offered no resistance. That's what I told me. I said, I want to eat. That guy said, okay. He said, take the food. The, the Bible said, he swore to him, sold his bad to Jacob. Yeah. They gave him bread and stew of lentils. He ate, drank, arose, went his way. He despised his bad But the Bible told us in the book of Hebrews, when he sought it with tears, it was not given to him. May you be more than an Esau. Yeah. David, in the book of 2 Samuel 23, verse 14 to 17, said, I just want to drink water from the well of Bethlehem. I'm so thirsty. I want to drink water. The Bible says at that point, the Philistines' garrison was in Bethlehem. You know the story. Then certain men of David went and brought the water. But the Bible says, and David did not drink it. It reminds me of a thirsty Jesus who didn't drink water. A hungry Jesus 
who did not eat bread. A hungry Jesus who did not turn stones to bread. Are you following me? Because David said, this is not water anymore. This is the blood of men. He said, if I drink it, people say, so if we have died, this is the way we'll be drinking. It would have ended being postured as a dictator or as a lord. But that day became an example of leadership. He said, ah, this is not water. This is blood. And the Bible said, he poured it before the Lord. Question, did this still have the desire to drink? Talk to me. When Jesus was at the well, did this still have the desire to drink? When Jesus did not turn stones to bread, did this suddenly become filled? So it's not only because God has answered you in the way you want that God has ministered to you. Am I making sense, church? David did not drink the water. I need to make people know we go through what everybody goes through. We have needs, but we are not driven by them. There is something higher than our needs in our life. Do you know what it's called? Our purpose. That's why we read Acts 16. Acts 16 from verse 1 is a story that is funny. The Bible said in that place, there was a guy called Timothy. Timothy Paul wanted him to go with him on the missionary journey. And what did Paul do? He circumcised him. And when he took him along, so in that journey, there were at least three people, Paul, Silas, and Timothy. Are you following me? The Bible said, They brought Timothy. Paul wanted to go preach in some places. The Holy Spirit stopped him. He wanted to go preach some other places in that same Acts 16. The Holy Spirit then he had a vision. A man of Macedonia say, Come to Macedonia and help us. The mission of going to Macedonia was what? Help. Then he got to a place called Philippi. The Bible says it was a colony of Macedonia. Then he went to a place where people were praying. Because that people who are praying does not mean they know God. Some people need to be helped. One of the people praying in that place was called Lydia. The Bible says she worshipped God. If she worshipped God, why does he still need God to open her heart to hear what Paul was saying? That means she had a, she was a sincere seeker, but she did not have an understanding of what she saw. There are so many people in church today who are sincerely seeking God, but they don't know him. They need help. And the Bible says he began to speak to her. God opened her heart. The Bible says she was a seller of purple. See, today purple is, this, is still the color of royalty. She was a rich woman. And if you are so poor, if you preach to a rich man and he gets born again, have you not found your destiny? Do you need to be begged to receive a seat? In fact, you begin to tell them, Lydia Shemu got all of his saving. Got all of his buying. Kelly Roy, share or share in law. You are saved. You know, she she eat it. Look at verse 15. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us. No, they won't beg you, you will demand. You don't get what I'm saying. Because the reason why you will demand is because the reason why you have been preaching is that you are waiting for the day you will catch a big fish. Jokon, jokon. Lord, we are a giant of faith. You know what I'm talking about? That has been the mission of your preaching. 
it is the same desire of need. You are so poor, you think the reason why you are preaching is that God will bring you to a rich man that will solve your problem. Paul said, I came to Macedonia to help, not to be helped. So what did he do? The woman begged him and said, if you have judged me faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. Which means Paul is more interested in your faithfulness to the Lord than what you have. Are you following me? Uh, when, you are, when you have met somebody who is more focused on their side, he's more interested. Paul looked at some people, he said, I don't seek yours, I seek you. So when Paul was looking at Lydia, what he was looking at is, who are you? Not what do you do? Be careful of people that every five, five minutes they meet you, the first thing they ask is, what do you do? They are not interested in who you are, they are interested in what you bring to the table. And there are people that if they go to Macedonia, they can't help. You know why they can't help? Because when they see Lydia, what they see is sell out purple. They don't want to know whether she's faithful. They don't want to know whether she's able. They just want to say, ah, God. She begged, she persuaded us. Do you know the meaning of persuade? He, Paul must have said, I'm still praying about it. May God bless you so much that when they bring you big money, you will still pray about it. A war. Before the, before the, this is this is it. Am I missing? I don't know. Paul was still praying. Lydia, Lydia, because Paul knows that one day now I will enter the place. People say I'm looking for why. Lydia, Lydia, Lydia. One day they will think that I'm looking for finance, kingdom finance. Lydia. That's, do you get what I'm talking about? But to a man that is so poor, who thinks I'm blind? Now I see his life. You came, you didn't have money, suddenly you have a convert that is a millionaire. Has God not answered your ministry? That's not Paul. The Bible says from that place, Paul was going to pray. His focus was prayer. Then a certain girl possessed with a divination spirit started talking. These are the men who show us the way of the living God. Now, this is a problem. The spirit kept talking about the fact that Paul showed the way of salvation, but he never allowed Paul to show the way. You don't get it. Every time Paul wants to talk, these are the men who show us the way of salvation. So at the end of the chapter, everybody's focus was on the spirit of divination, not on the person bringing the salvation. Are you following me? And for some of you, recognition is more important than your assignment. If they can just say, these are the men. We are the men. Some people here will not shut that spirit's mouth. Because that spirit is simple publicity. Cheap publicity. These are the men. These are the men. We are the men. We are the men. We are the men doing what? No, the spirit does not allow you to do what you do. But he's saying you are the men. You know, you get what I'm talking about. And that was my power. But to Paul. Recognition is not the same thing as assignment. Shut up now, spirit. Get out of her. I would prefer no spirit pointing to me, but me having the capacity to speak about the way of the Lord. Are you following me? And Paul did that. And the Bible said, when the masters of this girl saw that their chance for gain was taken, they took Paul. They arrested Paul and Silas. Took them to certain places, to the magistrate. The magistrate took them to the jailer. They told the jailer, these are not the type of men that must escape. But said, when the jailer had such a charge, medium security prison was not sufficient. He took them to the inner prison and placed them in stocks. Uh, don't aid the jailer. The jailer does not know you. It was what the jailer had. You see, you need to be preoccupied. You, you have a lot of people to help in Macedonia. People who are acting just because they are ignorant. Some people would have hated the jailer. The jailer was not there. It was what the jailer had. But do you know what I love at midnight? Paul and Silas. What was Paul going to do when the Spirit started talking? Well, talk to me. What was Paul going to do? When the enemy interrupted his journey, what was Paul still doing? It means that thing was so important. Now, some of you, if they interrupt your journey, 
It will not be prayer anymore. You are going to pray, then you are in the prison. It will be complete. But Paul said, they only changed the address of where we will pray. They didn't change the fact that we should pray. And they began to pray. May God give you focus. Focus that no disruption can change. Are you following me, church? And he said, and they began to pray. And suddenly, the prison doors open. Ask them in Kuje now, how prison door will open for you that you are a prisoner? What is the greatest goal of a prisoner? The Lord has anointed me to open the prison door of those who are captive. They don't need to give you command. The jailer is sleeping. The doors open, the chains broke. Shalom, the announcement got over. You are the one to take the next. When the jailer woke up, the jailer thought every human being that, day, that was there were people whose greatest burden in life was to be free. Great, Paul's greatest burden in Macedonia was not to be bound or to be free, it was to help. You didn't get what I'm saying. Are you, are you, Paul was not in Macedonia to be in prison, Paul was not in Macedonia to be out of prison. Paul was in Macedonia to help. And he helped at the water side. He helped his girl going that was possessed by a spirit of divination. He's helping again in the prison. So when the door opened or when the door closed, it didn't change anything. So the man wanted to kill himself. Paul said, don't kill yourself. If I run out of this place, God will ask me. The assignment I sent you are you following me? The man was about to kill me. Paul said, don't kill yourself. We are still here. Then the man ran in. He said, what must I do to be saved? Paul said, hey, the ministry has reconnected. He said, hey, you need to be baptized. You need to believe Jesus. That's why you don't hate the jailer. The jailer. was his own personal freedom. The jailer would have killed himself. He would have thought something evil happened to him when he didn't know God was giving him a moment to understand him, his person. Did you get what I'm saying? Say my mission is to bring help. He opened the door. And eventually the man took him to his house. The man washed his stripes. The man fed him. Paul preached to the man. Paul preached to the man's household. In the morning, they sent to Paul. The people who sent to Paul, they said, let's give him the greatest news he has been looking for. What is the greatest news he has been looking for? Let those men go. The top Paul said, ah, thank you, Jesus. Paul said, going where? Do you know what Paul told them? They bound us Romans. What was Paul saying? We never needed at any reason to have been here. Why did Paul plead the bound us Romans when they were just taking him into prison? Are you following me? He said, the bound us Romans, they threw us into prison. Now they sent to say, let them go. What moves everybody is not what moves me. If you say that message to any average prisoner, let them go, they will begin to thank God. Paul said, I'm not going, they will have to come and meet me here. When those people heard that they are Romans, they have to go to Paul. Paul. We did not know. Do you know what Paul was saying? He didn't put me in prison. I'm an ambassador in chains. It was Christ that brought me here. It's not you. If I wanted to prove that I don't need to be in prison, I would have claimed that I'm a Roman from the beginning. You don't get it. But Paul gave up his, his privileges for his purpose. Are you following me? It's like an American who goes to Somalia to be a missionary. It's two different worlds. That's why when they say those type of things to you, you cannot comprehend it because you don't understand purpose. Life to you is about advantages. How can an American give up being an American to go to Coma Hills where people started wearing clothes just about a decade ago? Can God lead you like that? 
you, you want to drop your Nigerian for Canadian citizenship, American citizenship, for what? Umiotumbi? There's scarcity of bread. There's no fuel. How many of you have told, have ever been able to say to this? Because God has a purpose. We don't talk purpose, we talk need. Have you noticed? You know, I have links. You are young. I don't have much people in America, but I have people in the United Kingdom. Are you willing? Abi, let's so I just take you. I'm beginning to sort your life from that place. I'm serious, so <laughs> we should talk after this. Abi, Abi. <laughs> Uh, and I'm not against it. But I'm just trying to tell you that except God has gotten your attention, you can't think deeper than your needs. You can't think deeper than your needs. Your needs will describe every step you take. So suddenly, if you are just in the prison and the doors are open, it's instinct. You don't, you don't even wait. You don't need to be told. You just discovered that you have started running. Are you following me? They don't need to tell you. There are some of us here, if something just happen, if suddenly I become president of Nigeria, now, instantly you will just begin to call me. You don't need, does God need to say, call pastor. Now you need to be led to call me. I don't need to pray. Let me become senior special advisor to the governor on religious matters. I am a humble of church. Because no normal human being sees a prison door open and stays. Because even when the door was locked, he has been looking for. Chances. You know what I'm talking about. And you speak to me about one of your third cousins, and suddenly when I meet the person, I become instant friend. I say, You know what I'm talking about. We become friends instantly because we are looking for chances of escape. They did not tell you your elder brother is the one doing it. You will sit down with a sense of entitlement. You get what I'm talking about. Except God has walked up. Can something be your real chance and you refuse to take it? It's because right in the mind of Paul, I am here to help somebody. Do you know what when they when eventually they told Paul you can go? They, do you know where Paul went back to? He went to the house of Lydia. Every disruption that happened, every challenge that happened, never changed the course of Paul. He started with Lydia, he ended with Lydia. Uh, you are not getting this because he always knew why I came to Macedonia. Church, you will go through battles. But may you never forget your purpose. God will give you opportunity. You will meet Lydia, rich people, rich, rich, a wombo. May you not lose your purpose. Because when some people meet Lydia, they'll forget the ministry. They will build a tabernacle. Lydia, let me become your distributor of purple in the entire Asia Minor. You know? In Kakao. Let's start a partnership. <laughs> you know when people have dropped their assignment when certain opportunities because they don't know there's a life beyond the open door. 
It's somebody that knows there's life beyond the open door that sees it and says, I'm not stepping into it. That's not what God said. I have a, I have a bread that you don't know of. That you are single does not mean any boy that comes is your husband. I know you are so desperate to marry. But any to buy one go home to buy her tongue. But what bear you? Life is bigger than the description that our basic needs try to push us into. Are you following me? You are walking on your feet now, God will give you a car. But that's not all. You are single now, you get married. And you are not saying the amen like thunder. People like Wale that today is their birthday. Today is their birthday. In two years. You don't know what I want to prophesy. Are you ready? Two years. Two years. Eh? The Lord will grant you according to your desire. Don't yeah. let me push you into what you are not ready for. Ah, glory to God. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 12 to 13. I'm almost through. I've tried to say basically that there are essential needs we have and I've never in any way denied their importance. Nothing, there's nothing that a prisoner wants to see. When I was in boarding school, we were like prisoners. Sometimes they would take us and say, go, they will be struggling to be part of people that they will take outside of the school gate to go and cut grass, the grass in front of the school. Because it's a type of freedom. You will see cars passing. You, know, you don't understand the weight of freedom. If they lock you in a room for three months and you don't see the sun, you will go mad. Except your spirit is strong. They take for granted the ability to see the sun. You get what I'm saying? So we will struggle. So people that they are given that chance, sometimes we'll be looking at them. They are not going home. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? They are going outside the school gate. Mr. Mr. You understand what I'm saying now? To cut grass. But your own is the field, you'll be angry. And how many months? One time was three months. Three months. Let me tell you about things we used to do. Guys, we sneak out to go and buy fufu. I see we have not eaten it in our life before. And the guy will come. You see, he will buy two wraps and ten people will sit on it. Just for a taste of something different from kitchen of school. And sometimes it's not that sweet. And you know that if that feeling can make you have a sense of big boy. Boy, you some of you didn't go to those type of school. Some of you say, Then they will go and <laughs> bring the burnt rice. And people will say, say, Ah, we'll be looking at him like, Oh my God, he's enjoying. Because when people are constrained and locked, we were not prisoners. So I, when I was serving, I pastored a prison. Nanambra State. I was preaching there every Sunday. I was their pastor. When they take prisoners out, that few moments of interacting with people that are not prisoners, dear, the type of praise worship I learned from them, I've never seen it in church. I still know their song. Ibuchimo, Ibuchi. 
Evil Kaya Jaws. That's where I learned that song. They don't have to bother. Their praise worship was other than the one you did this morning. Just to be able to talk to somebody that is not a prisoner. I share whether they understand, I don't know. Because those days I was even worse than this. You know, the Ezekiel dimension. How do I go to a prison and preach Ezekiel? That's about um, 21 years ago. Oh, no, that's uh, 2005. 16 years ago, I mean. So I said, it's all to them. So it's very strange for your doors to be open and your chains to be loosed. And you still say, I'm here. Because the ones whose chains are not loosed, we, we drag it along and go. Isaiah 22, verse 12 and 13. I found something more than the sheer basic desires of life. In that day, the Lord God of hosts called for weeping and for mourning, for baldness and for garden with sackcloth. But instead, joy, gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating meat and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. This is the description of life to some people. That is why this type of people are the Esau's of this world. So when you tell them, that's right, you say, let us eat and drink. Let's build houses. Have you heard it before? You know those type of things. Let us eat and drink. And with that tomorrow, who even knows who is going to enjoy everything? <laughs> In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 32, he said the same thing. Jump the Lord this morning. 1 Corinthians 15 32. If in the manner of men are fought with beasts as Ephesus, what advantage is to me if the dead do not rise? Let us what? Eat and drink for tomorrow. If the dead are not raised. So the reason why some of us are not eating and drinking is because of things that life cannot give to us, but that eternity will give to us. Are you following me? That's why we are denying some things. Not because we don't have those basic needs of men. But because we know death is not even cessation of everything. We know there is a life beyond this place. I can only imagine what it means to have 700 wives. 300 concubines without feeling like you're a sinner. Sometimes we want to have people to talk to, but but you see. We don't want to risk what is eternal for what is going to pass away. It's not because we are not like you. We have feelings. We are men. Blood is running in us. We know the difference between tall and short. Are you hearing me? Yeah, I'm very bobby. The ones that don't talk are the ones lying. We know what it means to enjoy. To go to Dubai in the morning. And eat dinner in Paris. You know what I'm talking about? You just enjoy. But when we're about to do it and have parties and people are dancing around us, <laughs> but when we want to do it, God sees us and said, First Corinthians chapter 5. <laughs> so I say, Ah, I hear you boring. Cool, boring. We've seen some doors that everybody's pressing into. But we've seen some things beyond that door. Hey, pastor is a very quiet. He doesn't like money. Eh? I saw one money mark. I woke up 3 a.m. I saw an alert. It took me 30 or 40 minutes of determining how to spend it. I said, okay. 
I got confused whether the money was for me or for church. Because the person that sent said for your ministry. Which was the ministry? Who the ladder? Crisis of conscience came up. I sent him because it's, in, it's out of the country. I sent him a text. I sent him the account of the church in case he still has other things to send to church so that I can have the confidence of receiving this. I am saying you, telling you all that you, I have need to. When you drive a good car, you enjoy life. You get what I'm talking about? When you take your children out of this place and they, they, they are not under the control of people who don't seem to have vision, you have rest. I can pursue money like you. It's not because you, hey, you are not a more man than me. My own is even worse. With this, I cannot beg. Because I beg, you will, not, you will not come to church. I don't want you to go to hell. So when I'm in need, in need, I'll come and say, my God, shall supply all your, why did he say all my? I will even be blessing you again, all your need, all your need. Every time I tell you, your, your, as if I don't have. Are you following me? I have those things, but I have another bread too. That you don't know of. When I eat that bread, it satisfies a part of me that you can't touch. You know, when I was preaching here the other time, I started keeping quiet. Some of you thought I was seeing a vision. I was not seeing a vision. My chest was tightening. I've never had it in a long time. I felt like sitting down. But she's some of you belay by the someone. But I have a bread that you don't know of. I, I wanted to check that I'm okay very well. He said, I was not seeing a vision. I was checking the palpitations of my heart. <laughs> I won't drop dead on the pulpit. No, it's not me. It's not my portion. Everything was tight in the way. Ah, clude, clude. I was watching, but I have a bread. Some of you, if you have that type of feeling in your heart, TD wish you will not come to church. Every time they call you, say, what's happening? They say, Mutsi, rest. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? But I have a bread that you don't know of. It's not always easy to come to quarry as a, but I have a bread that you don't know of. There is a part of me that is ministers to you, that nothing else can minister to it. That's why I'm preaching this morning. And I want to ask you whether you have that type of bread. Because if you don't have that type of bread, you can't understand that praying purpose. You will always live for basic needs. Needs will determine your rising and your sitting. And after half time, the Bible says, when they build the, the golden calf in the wilderness, they rose up to eat and to drink and to play. Is a description of idolatry. Serving of self. Rising to eat and to drink and to play. If you can eat and drink and play and do all you wish, is, are you fulfilled? For an average human being, they are. They are. Man, can you imagine, Mama, yearly vacation? I think I'm going to go it's about to start. Amen. I know I'm not just prophesying, I'm telling you. I don't know to go at the end. It will lift you too. Yeah. You know, at the end of anniversary, I love. Last year I was Belgium. This year. Let's go greet your friend. You know those type of things. Life will be simpler, isn't it? Won't you feel more fulfilled? <laughs> To rise, to eat, to drink. Not just to eat like you're hungry, but to eat what you want. No, when you are rich, you will just try. Say, there is one eatery. It's a, they just opened it in our jaw. I want to eat there. <laughs> Don't tell the poor man down. The poor man will say, "Ibo lo chip juleria." 
Eh? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Then you go to a place, they say, one piece of chicken, three, five. You say, ah, yes, so bad now. <laughs> I many of you have had it before? <laughs> Me, I will use three, five to buy chicken. Chicken. <laughs> ah. <laughs> These are needs, but they are not, they are not, they, 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 are, they aren't everything about life. Let me give you a few scriptures I'm true. 1 Corinthians 6, 12 to 13. Food for the belly. Someone said the belly needs food. 1 Corinthians 6, 12 and 13. All things are love for me, but not all things are helpful. I'm not against them. They are love for all things are love for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Food for the stomach. Stomach for the food. But God will destroy them both of it and them now the body is not for sexual immorality but for the lord and the lord for the body food for the stomach stomach for the food they will both perish one day that's why we can't just live the entire sense of our life built on it in first timothy 6 8 paul said having food and clothing be content there it in that first corinthians in first timothy 6 he said a lot of things he, he had to tell us he said those who desire to be rich in this world will pierce themselves with many sorrows but he said charge those who are rich he spoke about the obsession to be rich but he gave command to the rich which means you don't need to be obsessed to be rich to be rich and to be rich is not a final destination he said tell them that are rich to be good in good works to lay up treasures in heaven where there is no corruption laid up unto eternal life are you following me so in first Corinth, in first timothy 6 you will read he, he spoke about the need for food he spoke about the need for clothing but he showed them ultimately that it is it should not become an obsession to be rich and he told the rich not to think of themselves more highly than how to think but to even begin to lay things for eternal life you know why he said it he said because there is nothing we brought to this world and there is nothing you are going to take out of it. Whether you are obsessed with it, or you just suddenly find yourself in it, let me tell you something. There is nothing you brought in, there is nothing you take out. So when God opens that door for you, ask him, what will you have me do? Your next 10 million is not necessarily about that desire you have been longing for. I don't know whether you get it. Like I can just have it now. Life is settled. I want to show you four things that are essential, but that you must never allow to control you. Number one, food. 2 Kings chapter 4, 38 to 41. There was a famine. 2 Kings 4, 38 to 41. There was a famine in Israel. Elisha said to the prophet, sons of the prophet, put on a large pot, let's cook something. And the Bible said in the next verse, so one went out. Whatsoever is essential, do you know people don't sit down for them. People go out for them. Are you following me? Are you following? It's not because you love job. It's because you have an essential need. What is the essential need? Having food. You get to one point and say, they are still feeding me. No. They went out. And because it's needful. The prophet didn't stop them from going out because when it's an issue of food, you need to go out. Some of you need to get up from your very relaxed positions. Are you following me, church? Because it's an essential part of life, but it must not become the full description of life. Are you following me? Somebody came to me recently and said, oh, you know, where I'm teaching and this, this, and they are telling me to go and apply in a ministry. I said, go and apply. She thought I would say, I would pray. I said, go and apply. I said, keep moving. 
Tell your neighbor, keep moving. Improve yourself, improve your skill. Go out. Go out. But listen, when they went out, they found the wild vine. And the wild vine was fruitful. Then they cut it and put it in the stew. And the food became dead. And as they were about to eat, they couldn't eat anymore. Because they said, there's death in the pot. Listen, as essential as food is, it doesn't give you a right to eat just anything. I don't know whether you get that description. You will go out for it, but don't gather anything just for it. Go out for it. Are you following me? Push for it, but don't gather just anything. Don't gather what will come and trouble you at the end. Go out for it. Don't be relaxed. Don't stay back. Train for it. But don't just say, eh, let's eat and drink and tomorrow we'll die. Do anything goes. The next thing I want you to see that is essential is productivity, the things that bring you productivity. In Exodus chapter 5, verse 4 to 20, you stay in verse 12. The Egyptians refused to give the Israelites trouble to break to make bricks. Verse 12 said, The people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather trouble instead of straw. Because they told them you must deliver. And so what did they do? They went everywhere. There are things that take us everywhere: food and opportunities. Are you following me? All your friends that travel out is quest for opportunity. I understand. And we need it. It's an essential need of life. You need opportunity. Everybody is scattered everywhere looking for, for straw. Are you following me? Are you following me? The next one is shelter. Second Kings chapter 6. Verse 1 to 7. The sons of the prophet came to Elijah. Where we are dwelling is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan. Let's step out from where we are. And Elisha said, go. I'm trying to show you these things to tell you. Those needs, God never said no to them. God is for them. Elisha didn't say, when the sons of the prophet said there is famine, he didn't say, go, don't go and gather food. He didn't say to them, stay in the constrained place. Go. But you, the only thing is that, did you notice that when they were cutting down, they asked fair. The reason why you don't forget God in the midst of those quests is because things will happen that you didn't plan for. You didn't get what I'm saying. You will gather wild vine or lose the axe head where you will need God again to show up. Are you following me? That's why you can't just eat and drink and just face death and forget God. Number four, security. In 1 Samuel 23, verse 7 to 13, David entered a walled city they called Kalia. Saul came to arrest him there. And when Saul came, David asked God, will these people deliver me to Saul? God said, they will. The Bible said, David and his men got out of the city and went wheresoever they found. They didn't say, Lord, why are you leading us? When you are looking for security, have you discovered that you just, it's like if they shoot gun, people don't run in the same direction. People run wherever they find. That day, where David slept, is not where his commander slept, all the group, they went, they went wherever they could go. It's a quest for security. See, these things are so powerful. They push you. They scatter you. The quest for food, raiment, shelter. Are you following me? Security. They push you. But please don't let them push you totally. That you think everything about life is to minister to those things. Are you following me? I pray you get my understanding this morning. Who has a need for security here today? I have. Have you ever asked your que the question, is this the country I want to raise my children? I want to 
if you board me car, you are praying. In this Ibadan, since I've known till today, there are still people that when they enter America, they say there's somebody, there's one dollar at the back of the they've been doing it for over 10 years and they are still doing it, and they are taking people. Sometimes when all these things overwhelm you, you just you just escape wherever. Somebody say wherever. They will say, Ron, get there is a place in Syria alone. And they will pay <laughs> visa on arrival. And they will pay you as expatriate. Oh. Then you discover you can't sleep in the night. You are beginning to think it. As needful as they are, they cannot become an obsession. Having food and clothing, be content. The funny thing about living for those things is that the Bible told me those that love silver will never be satisfied with it. The day you open up to them and they become the reason for living, it becomes a bottomless pit. The day you get them, you will soon discover that they are not everything. That's why they see what gathers the meaning of everything is the sense of purpose. Some people will live in Nigeria from birth to death, they are not caused. You didn't hear what I just said. They are not caused. You see, you can travel all over the nations of the earth in a very caused manner. They showed us here recently how Cain left the presence of God and he was caused and he built a city. A cost man can build a city. Yes. You didn't hear what I just said. A cost man can build a city. They say, oh Lord, Lord, Sukaba. I'm not Sukaba. I don't, I don't want to be confused about God. I don't want to call God it. But that person upstairs, I want to call him Father. Uh, you get what I'm talking about. I don't want to develop what the whole world is using, but I cannot even discern what God wants me to do. As powerful as open doors are, and something beyond them. So don't live only for the next answer to the greatest pain you have now. As though when the next answer to the greatest pain you have now comes, everything is soft. It's not true. Maybe I've been able to push my thoughts. Someone said there's, an, there's somewhere beyond this open door. I want to balance it. The open door for Peter. You remember in Acts 12, he went to. Some of you, when they open the door, you must go. Because that is the assignment. The assignment for opening door in Acts 12 is to deliver Peter. The assignment for opening door in Acts 16 is to bring Paul out to help them in Macedonia. Are you following me? You must discern why God is working in with you, in the way He's working with you. And the Lord will give you understanding. I said the Lord will give you understanding in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God said to Israel, when you were in the wilderness, I took you through the wilderness. I caused you to hunger. Deuteronomy 8, 1 to 7. I caused you to hunger, but yet I fed you with manna. That you might know that man shall not live by bread alone. That was why sometimes they were in the wilderness and their whole body was bread and God was not answering. God, God was bringing law. And some people say, What was the law have to do with me? I'm in the wilderness, there's no water, there's no thirst. Those are the things that caused their rebellion. But those things were less important to God than the law. Because God can bring those things out of rocks. Your greatest need can come out. What do you do now? Eh? Why were you talking to that person at that time? Eh? Some of you are going to meet people. You start discussing why you something you don't know why you are discussing. And the person will just say, I'm the answer to what you are asking. That is not your brain. God can bring water out of the rock, but, but your heart must receive the law. 
Thy word have I hidden in my heart. That one does not come by striking the rock. That one comes by this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And that's the way you were going to make your way prosperous. And you will have good success. Do you get my body in this morning? I'm praying that some of you, yet God will open the next door. Amen. You didn't say the amen very well. Amen. The bound will be free. Amen. The captives will express liberty. Amen. The sick will be healed. Amen. The poor will hear good tidings. Amen. If you are mourning, God will bring you comfort. Amen. Ashes will be met with beauty. Amen. Heaviness will be met with the oil of joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. And with this door, God will give you a purpose. I will give you a purpose with it. That you will not consume it on your own lust. Second Corinthians 12, 14 and 15. Second Corinthians 12, 14 and 15. Paul said, Now for the third time I'm ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you. For I do not seek yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. I will very gladly spend and be spent for your souls. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I'm loved. Recently, I sent some money to my parents periodically, my father especially. I've never seen my father in need. So, I know it's, it's 75. It's not the money. I see my father sometimes call me and say, ah, I saw your hand. Thank you, number one, the money is ridiculous. But what is his joy? It's not the money. The joy is that his sons are coming into the full essence of themselves. That he knows that they can find their feet and move on in life. When Paul got to Lydia, Lydia was a seller of pop. But Paul was not there. For what he could get from Lydia, what Paul wanted to do with Lydia is something that when he departs, Lydia can be the center of God's revival. Because when he came out from prison, where were the brethren meeting? Lydia's house. Do you get what I'm saying? 
God must give you a sense of vision that your need does not trap. Are you getting it? Because some people immediately they get to Lydia's house and they be hungry. Lydia becomes the milking cow. Are you following me? And they frustrate the mission. They forget that parents don't ex anything you give to your child under normal circumstances anything you give to your parent your parents should not wait for you to eat if they take anything sometimes when i go home and i take things to my father and my mother then my father will start giving my children gifts uh, right, this one come take by the time you calculate what they have given them it has exceeded what do I, what you brought to them because fathers don't lay sons don't lay talk for their fathers it's fathers that lay talk for their children they are always focused even when they are taking from you the goal is to check your capacity of being able to sustain yourself it's not their need i don't know whether you get the body this is what i'm trying to say but some parents lose vision they lose the vision they start mothers of yahoo 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 boys association they said they are praying for them they are hitting a course because they don't understand parenting you are when you get to that point your goal is not parents, children for parents it's parents for their children anything the goal is they can sit down uh, if you go when we were young those days you go to our grandfather their greatest possession was a reclining chair i don't know whether you had that they will sit down that is at that point is the most secure place for them it doesn't matter what is happening their children are okay. Their children are going forward. And they don't mind what they have lost. For children ought not to lay up for their father, father, parents, but parents for their children. I hope our mission is not, has not been lost. I hope our needs have not overtaken our pattern. Or our needs have overtaken our essence. Do you think they don't have needs at that point? Don't they have needs? But life has the meaning of life. Paul did not even know where he was going to stay in, Philipp, in, in, in Macedonia. But where he was going to stay was not as important as the art of Lydia being faithful to God. I didn't get what I'm saying. So I want you to pray for Lord, let no need that I have today distract me from my purpose. They are valid, they are essential, but they must not distract you from your purpose. Needs will come, they will go, they will change, but your purpose will remain. There is something beyond that open door. There is a life beyond that open door. Look out for it. Look out for it. Look out for it. What do you desire? I want these doors to be open. I want these doors to be open. If it opens, have you forgotten why you are here? There's a jailer that needs an answer. There's a family that needs to be saved. There's a city that needs enlightenment. Come to Macedonia and help. Deliver me, Lord, from my own lusts. Lost will trap your purpose. Surrender everything to him today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 to 17. You know, look at those, look at the guy, people who owe that slave girl. They couldn't celebrate the freedom of the slave girl. Do you know why? Because their profit was going to be taken away. You know, sometimes people can't celebrate what God is doing. Immediately, it does not serve their own desire. God must give you so much of vision that you look at the bigger picture of what God is doing. 
Oh, a child is just free from a demonic spirit. They will not be your patient or psychiatric hospital anymore. There are so many malpractices even in medicine today because of money. The doctor told me, he said, there are people we admit, we know they should go. But somebody here recently, they took him. He was wily. He was a bit sick. And he was just, they just gave him bed rest. After two days, they gave him 80,000. Wale said, Kilo Day? Say, I went to see the same team myself. He said, Ah, Kilo Shelly. They said, Okay, then they gave him 65,000. LT is expensive. You will not be sick. But I'm telling you that people can do anything for gain. They can even give you water as injection. <laughs> they know you do have problem. But since you say you have problem, <laughs> they will admit you. These people, they were so focused on their goal. And when their goal was missing, they arrested Paul. Look at Paul. What Paul said in Philippians. In this, this Philippi. That's Philippians. That same region. Paul said, now you Philippians, I know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but only you. Look at what he said. For even in Thessalonica, you said aid once again for my necessity. Verse 17. Not that I seek a gift. I, I, I have need but that is not what this guy he said, no, but I seek the fruit so sometimes when I'm pushing you to do certain things I must be careful that I'm not pushing you to do it because it appeals to it will serve my own needs but I seek fruit that abounds to your account are you following me I want God to find something in your account when it comes. I want God to find a record of devotion. I want God to find a record of faithfulness. I want God to find a record of liberality. I want God not for my need. This guy has overtaken his own needs. He said, you know, he's in our told he said, because I have learned to be content in everything. I have learned to abound. I have learned to abase. My God shall supply. That's what I've learned. So when I'm talking, so when you come to church and people are talking about money, it's not always about the need. I make bold to tell you today. Things don't just happen. There must be things in your account that God saw. Some of you, they will say they want to do anniversary. That's the day you stop coming to church. Number one, let me tell you, they will do it. Are you following? Some of you, when, they, when you hear, they, you, want to, you want to change the gates. You stop suddenly before they share the grace, you always something's pulling. Don't worry, they will change the gate. But listen, when God comes to your account, it will be zero. Some people will live through this dark economy and they will survive. Do you know why? Because they there are things God found, there are liberalities God found in them. This is a moment to learn to be liberal to God. Stop playing games. It's not about anybody looking for your money. Parents lay in stock for their children. Ask my leadership team. There are so many times my leadership could come to me. Pastor, you deserve to take this. What do I tell you? Never worry. Be a letter. Because parents lay in stock. I know my place. And I know my God. Are you following me, church? Pray the Lord give you understanding today.
pray the Lord will pull your doors. I thought you say better, amen. amen. Play that keyboard for me. Play. Everybody lift your hands up. Thank you, Jesus. For things you have suffered deprivation for, you have been called names for. Things you needed that you did not have. Eating you up. Causing you pain. Doors you have knocked that did not open. Lord, by your spirit today, let the doors open. Rooms be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Opportunities you have knocked for years to change address, to go to a new place that has been denied you. Be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Favor. Be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Doors of healing and health. Be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Doors of consolation. The Spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the good news. Doors of consolation. Be open in the name of Jesus. Doors of deliverance. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Ayala Bashata. Doors of deliverance. Be open in the name of Jesus. Doors of ministry. Be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Doors of assignment. Be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Doors of reward. For everything you have put on the ground that has not yielded back. Doors of reward. Be open in Jesus' name. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Oh God of heaven and the earth, I minister the oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus Christ. Beauty, replace every ashes, replace every shame. They attended your in introduction but they did not find your marriage because what you have what you have already shouted for people failed in the midst of the way and it became a shame i i, I command that beauty is restored in place of every shame and every ashes in the mighty name of jesus christ there was no reason why paul should be in prison there was no reason why Joseph should be in prison. They were too dead evil for their good. Wherever men have assaulted you, wherever men have paid you back evil for your good, and shut you down, I flung those doors open by the Spirit of God. Ayala Bayada. Where they have called you a bad, a bad name and an evil report has been mentioned about you, and you are not there to defend yourself. And men have locked themselves against you and locked opportunities against you. Man, the Rushakalabaya. I command those doors to flung apart. Let the earthquake happen now. Let the earthquake happen now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Abarade Gaboshida. Whatever you have waited for, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, it didn't come. This is your year. I am the one They prophesied the gift of land in 2020. You are not here. I connect you back to it. I connect you back to it. Take your portion. Take your portion. Take your portion. Take your portion. Say, so when we dedicated this house, we said, for people who lay God in this house, God will build you houses. I reenact that word. 
Abila tenembri de boku di hatia. Fenembre ke du shafa. Abre ke kule bade kara na boku baadia. Angre du shafa da hamrudia. That contested property of your family. Restore. Restore. Bandia. Take it back. Who is trying to take what is yours from your household? The Lord restores it back to you. Restores it back to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Houses you did not build. Houses you did not build. Wells you did not dig. And the Bayada. Vineyards you did not plant. Market those are jobs you did not apply for. Jobs you did not look for. They will look for you. 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 Whatever is making you pain. Whatever you cannot easily forget. When you come before God, it comes again to your mind. Let the Lord start answering you from that point. Let the answer start from that point. Let the answer start from that point. Let the answer start from that point. In the name of Jesus. In the midst of everything, I connect you back to remembrance of the purpose the Lord has sent you. Before there was a Lydia, there was a vision. Before there was a demon possessed girl of divination, there was a vision. Before there was a prison in, in Macedonia, there was a vision. When there was an earthquake before it, there was a vision. Come over to Macedonia and help us. In the midst of ups and down, I connect you back to the to the governing vision of your life. You will not forget. There is no Esau here. There is no Esau here. There is no Esau here. We will live. We will not die. We fulfill the black purpose of the Lord. It is done. Having food and clothing, be content. It be only pain. Maraba ye kasabu. Frenembare. But God who fed them with manna. Shalabagadia boko sikaraba. That God will supply your needs. Erikabo lo kasimbra ni kabo. The God who brought waters out of the rock. In the midst of that intense need, let miracles start. Miracles now. Miracles now. In Jesus' name. Having food and clothing. Clothing is a sign of covering that takes away shame. Wherever you go and the enemy wants to embarrass you, you shall be covered. 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 In the name of Jesus. Every detour of challenge that has shaken you, that has almost changed your focus for life, the Lord snatch you from them. You will reconnect back to your mission, to your assignment. You that said many years ago, I will be a giver to the kingdom, I reconnect you back. Offenses that took you away from them, I banish them. The blood flows this day. The blood of the Lamb flows this day. I reconnect you back to your assignment and it's peace. In the name of Jesus. You are not the one lacking opportunity. Opportunity is coming to you. It's coming to you. It's coming to you. It's coming to you. Coming to you. Coming to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. For an open door. Give him glory. Give him praise. And honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. Whatsoever is essential is coming. Yet in the midst of it, you are not forgetting. You are not worshiping those things. You are worshiping the Lord. You are worshiping the Lord. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Health, healing, peace, abundance of grace. Jesus, we thank you. We honor you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody.